Hey guys, Thomas here from Fast Track FBA, and today I want to go through some keeper training expert level with you. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so today I'm going to be doing some expert keeper training, but before I jump into that, I really recommend you take my basic keeper training. I'm going to drop a link just up here. That's the foundations, the fundamentals, and I really recommend you just get that done. That means you know everything that you need to know. Number two, I'd recommend you take my advanced keeper training. And again, I'm going to drop another link up above here. And then once you've done that, then you're ready to take this expert. Now, it's not to say that you can't just jump in on this. You might be able to, but you might not fully appreciate what I'm trying to tell you, and you might have more questions. Just watching those two previous videos are going to answer a lot of the questions for you. Now, what I'm going to show you today are a series of products, a series of keeper graphs, whereby things are going wrong. Certain things are happening that are not normal. And what I'm trying to show you is that you should be looking at the keeper graph all the time and there are going to be certain things that show up that happen which are going to maybe you don't know about maybe you're unaware of and hopefully i can either save you a lot of money when you see these problems or b make you a lot of money by looking at keeper a slightly different way so let's get started right okay so i am here right now in a product that i've preloaded because i know this product i've used it many times for training in the va academy and that's all the vas we train for other people now this is quite simply like a lol surprise product not much and i've zoomed into a certain section so this is like january the 18th through to february the 3rd and the reason why i zoomed into this section is quite simply what i'm interested in is that sales rank now if you're looking at this sales rank right now you're probably thinking this product's selling quite well you know look how many kind of drops you can see look at what's going on and you're thinking this is a good product now what i'm going to tell you is if you are looking at this product thinking it's selling a lot just in the graph that i'm showing you right now you're fooled it's not it's not selling as half as much as you think and i'm going to kind of explain why so let's go into it now so what I've done now is just taken a snippet of this product and what you can see here, and if I kind of think about it, you're probably saying maybe there's one sale here, 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 here, so on and so on. And you're thinking they're sales, but they're not. And let's kind of explain why. First of all, we need to go back to what is a sale on Keeper? What does it look like? In the advanced Keeper training, we talked about what happens with the product when we've got time down the bottom, and then we've got rank at the top, sales rank. And what's going on is that a product is maybe ranked 10,000, then it goes 11,000, 12,000, 13,000 as it's not selling. And then when it sells, it drops back down to maybe 10,000 again. So we're seeing that 10,000, you know, 10,000, 11,000, 12,000, 13,000, 14,000. Remember over time, time's moving on, 15,000, 16,000, and then drops down to 10,000. We draw a line through all the dots. We see an arch and a drop an arch and a drop, an arch and a drop. What are we seeing on this graph? We're seeing an arch, but not a drop. We're seeing an arch down. We're seeing an arch up and an arch down. Now, the interesting thing is, question it. Ask yourself what's going on. And if you think about it, what is sales rank? Sales rank is the order preference of the products that are in rank order. Now, if you think about what's going on, this isn't going up, drop, it's going up and then back down again. Now, I don't know exactly what's going on, but my best interpretation of this is to say something's going on within the sales rank. I call it movements in the matrix. Now, a good example of this might be the case that this product could be in toys and games. It could be like the 10,000th best selling product. And interesting enough, it could be that 300, 400 products underneath it have now moved out to another category. It could be the fact that something's going on whereby this product's you know, changing or something's going on in that category, that sales rank order that is causing some of the products to come in and then some of the products to go out again, which, you know, if you had a product that was 10,000 and all those products below it, which were 9,000 to 9,500, all of a sudden they were to move to another category. Well, the product 10,000 would now have to go down to 9,500 because 500 products below it have disappeared. But it doesn't mean it's selling any more. Just think about that. 
That doesn't mean it's selling any more, but it would the sales rank would go down. So you would see a sales rank go down. Now, if they move the sales those products back into the category, that product will get back up again. So what we're seeing here is these kind of steps, and then steps down, steps up, steps down. And they're not sales, there's something going on, and I call it the movements in the matrix. But if we have a look at this product, what we can see is there are certain times here, arch, drop, arch, drop, arch, drop, arch, drop. And I'll probably say here, arch, drop. So I can see sales, one, two, three, four, five, but I can see a lot of other movement which doesn't actually look like sales. So on the face of it, this graph is really good. It looks like it's selling really low, it's selling a lot of products. But actually when you dig into the detail, something's not right. And for me, I would just be very careful about buying that because I'm not seeing that clear graph, that clear sales pattern, that arch and then drop, and seeing something else which would give me caution. So for you, hopefully when you're reviewing deals, if you see something like that, I've seen it quite a bit, you're going to now go, ah, maybe that isn't a sale, maybe that is just movements in the rank order. So keep an open mind. So let's have a look at another one. Now in my advanced training, I went through some training around, does, how do you know if Amazon's showing the buy box? And this is true, this is fantastic. It's about how do we know if Amazon's showing the buy box? And we talked basically quite simply to say what you are looking for is when Amazon is on the listing and they have allowed another seller to sell at a price, or should we say a sell and own the buy box, which isn't Amazon. So if I come back now, this is exactly the same example I used in that video. There's something really interesting about this product that you need to be aware of when you are making that analysis, i.e. understanding, how do I know if Amazon's sharing the buy box? So now let's go into this product and have a look and see what you need to think about on top of what I explained in the advanced training. So what I've got here is this product. Now I'm just gonna take a snippet of it exactly the same as I did last time. And what I'm gonna do is really just look at this section right here. So let's just kind of block that off. What I'm interested in is right here, this section, I'm not interested in any of this. So we're gonna remove that. When we looked at the new offer count, or when we looked at it in the advanced training, sorry, and we looked at, you know, is Amazon sharing? We could see quite simply that we had FBA seller here, FBA seller here. We could also see that we had Amazon on the listing here and Amazon on the listing here. And we could also see that we had FBM, which was fantastic, here, here, and here. So we know, what do we know? Well, we know that from this point here, all the way through to this point here, or this, this gap here, this is all Amazon. And then we know this point here is FBA, or FBM, sorry, because they're blue. And this bit here is FB, uh, back to Amazon again. Now, what we know is the fact that Amazon is on the shaded box here, great. And we know that also as well, Amazon has given the buy box away here to other sellers. So we know that Amazon is sharing, which is great. We're happy with that. But the big point which we didn't talk about is while we know Amazon is sharing, the big question comes at what price they're sharing. So let's say, for example, I'm looking at this product today and I'm looking at this product today and today's price is about, let's say, 65 pounds. Now let's say for example, I work on the model of three pound profit, 30% ROI. Let's say for example, today I'm gonna to be making three pound profit, 30% ROI on this product if I sell at today's market price. Let's just drop that in, three pound profit, 30% ROI. And you know, your VA or you might really come into this product, look at it and go, 65 pound, three pound profit, 30% ROI, Cool, that meets my criteria, and I've hovered over the buy box, and I can see Amazon sharing. Winner, winner, I've got a great deal. But you need to be super careful, because you are right. Yes, at 65 pound, you're gonna make three pound profit, 30% ROI, and yes, Amazon is sharing the buy box, and you can see that historically, but the bit you're missing is at what price is Amazon sharing the buy box? Amazon will share the buy box with other sellers when they are competitive. And it's that competitive point that you really need to take into consideration. So when we look at this product, right now it's 65 pound, and if we could sell it for 65 pound, fantastic, we're gonna make our margin and our ROI that we're interested in. But what we really need to ask is at what price has Amazon shared the buy box out in the past? So let's just have a quick look. We know between this bit here, Amazon sharing. So all these pink dots here, Amazon is sharing the buy box. But the question you've got to ask yourself 
it's what's the highest price they've ever shared it to. Now, if you're an FBA seller, it might be higher than FBM, but here I can see pretty much Amazon sharing around the £60 mark. So say, for example, here, this is £60. Now, when I'm doing my analysis right now, I'm doing my analysis, 33 pound profit, 30 percent ROI, based off a sale price of 65. And what I really need to be doing is looking at the highest price Amazon shared the buy box before in the past. And what's that highest price? And I can see here, it's 60 pound. So now when I recalculate to do not 65 sale price, but 60 pound, because that's the price at which Amazon is sharing at, I'm no longer gonna be making three pound profit, 30 percent ROI. I don't know what I'll be making, but it'll be less and it probably won't be a deal. So whenever you're doing your deal analysis versus Amazon, i.e. are they sharing? The question is always, yes, uh, are, is Amazon sharing on the listing? Are they sharing to FBM and how often they're doing it? Or FBA, how often they're doing it? That's great. But the big question you need to be asking yourself, at what price are they sharing? And if I can sell at that price, am I competitive? Because yes, right now it's 65, I might be able to sell at 65, but I have no evidence that it's ever been sold at 65, or I have no evidence that Amazon's ever shared at 65. I only have evidence it's sold at 60. So I have to do all my calculations off 60. So for you, when you're doing analysis, what's the highest price Amazon's ever shared at, and then do your calculations off that, because that way you're playing it safe rather than gambling. And hey, we're not into gambling, this is a business. So that's a little bit about that. Now, let's have a look at another interesting graph. So I'm just gonna jump into this product. So now, uh, a good friend of mine shared me this graph. This is a product that they talked about. Now, on the face of it, you might think this product right now is a great product. There is no Amazon on the product. Look at that buy box price. You know, I can see here it's been going for what? 17 pound. You might be like, wow, this is amazing. But there's something a bit strange there's something a bit strange, and I'm going to turn on the new FBA for a second. And normally I don't look at that, but when I've looked at the listing, and if you want me to, I'll go into the listing itself, and we'll load up this product. So what I can see here is right now it's got buy box suppressed. But if I'm going to go look at the, the sales rank, or should I say, if I'm going to look at the actual product, I can see the buy box existed at $16.99. Now what's really interesting is the fact that this product has had the buy box at $16.99 and there are sellers at $11.85 consistently. But right now it's suppressed and there's still sellers at $11.85 but there's no buy box and I really don't understand why. So let's have a quick look at the buy box and let's click on them. So right now, home slates. Let's go back, home slates. Let's go back, home slates. Let's go back. Home sites. Really interestingly, it seems for some weird reason every single buy box is owned by home slates. And if home slates isn't on the listing, there is no buy box. This is a really strange product, but what does this tell us? And what should you learn from this? There is no one hard and fast rule in Amazon. Every product is treated differently. For some weird reason, these things happen. And what you really need to be doing is analyzing that keeper chart really looking at what's going on. You might come into this product, and let's say, for example, you come into this product today, April 16th, and you're thinking, oh, the buy box seller is $16.99, I'm just gonna come in, I'm making good ROI, I'm gonna come in and sell it for $15.99, I'll win the buy box and make lots of sales. But you know what? We can see, it doesn't matter how low you go, you will never win the buy box off home slates. They seem to be the only seller who can win the buy box. And even when there are other FBA sellers on the listing, and if you want me to check, Right now, well, we know this, we can see it because you can see it through the graph. There are other FBA sellers on this listing. They are not winning the buy box. So whenever you're doing your deal analysis, don't assume anything. Always look at the graph, ask yourself the question, or ask the question, what's going on with this product? Every product is different, and you need to really understand what is happening with those products. So when I'm looking at this product, or when it got raised to me, I was like, oh, interesting. Looks like a good product on the face of it. But why is there one product, one seller on the buy box? What does it teach you? That Amazon treats products differently. There is no generic rule. Each product can be treated individually by some weird algorithm. So do the analysis on each individual product, and then obviously you'll understand what is going on. But hey, if you know about this product and you know why Home State seems to be winning it, please let me know because I would love to know that as well.
drop it down below. Now let's have a look at one more product. And this is kind of about me going through some doing some deal analysis. So I looked at this product. This is a product that I reviewed and I was quite interested in it. You know, I looked here and when I'm doing my deal analysis, I'm going to kind of short you through now what I'm kind of looking at. So one thing I've just got to kind of point out is number one, I'm a VAT registered seller and the, the model that I work to, the way I work, is quite simple. I'm looking at just buying more, selling volume, making my life simpler. I'm not so worried about getting a great margin. I'm more just about let's turn that money as quick as possible. If you're under the VAT threshold, you probably want to take a different approach. But for me, I can take less margin or less ROI and actually just do more volume. And it works just the same because I'm quite efficient in my business. So I just want to take a, a screenshot here. So if I hover over the buy box, wait for this to come up. Now, when I did the analysis with my purchasing manager on this product, what did I do? Quite simply, I came in and I drew an imaginary line in my head. Now, if you want to know, I think my buy price or my break even price and the price I was looking at was around about 30 pounds. So I just drew a line across 30 pounds. Now, I looked at this product and said, yeah, Amazon are on it. I can see one time right here that Amazon has shared the buy box when they've been on the listing with an FBM much higher. And also I can see other times they've done it, but they, Amazon not been on the listing. So I've seen evidence that Amazon shared and when Amazon shared, they've been at a price higher than what I need to sell it at. And interesting enough, my price where I need to be, this is this about 30 pound, that's generally speaking, I'm okay. So I'm willing to test this product to check it to see what's going on. Now, interesting enough, the one thing I said to my purchasing manager was that for the life of this product, one year, I might lose money, i.e. my risk might be here, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here. That's about it, and maybe a bit here and a bit here. But for the majority of the time, I'm gonna be above the line. I'm gonna be making money. I'm not gonna be losing it. So I'm happy to do a test buy to see if Amazon's gonna share with me and at what price. But also as well, the product looks pretty good. I'm not really gonna be losing any money, you know, and I'm gonna be hitting my ROI where I want to be pretty much all the time. Apart from these areas I've highlighted in blue, they're gonna be slightly below my ROI. Now, the one thing which I said to my purchasing manager was that my estimation of this product, i.e. I'm gonna be hitting my ROI, I'm gonna be making it work over time, works for the history of the graph. And whenever I'm doing my analysis, I'm always trying to understand what's happened in the past. It's gonna be a very good indicator in the future. But there's one thing about this product which I need to be really mindful of and when you're doing deal analysis, you need to think about. When I'm doing my reviews, I'm looking back in the past, I can see that it's gonna be fine. I'm not gonna lose money. You know, maybe my break even's like down here, for example, much lower. And I'm then gonna be making the money that I want, if not slightly lower than it, all the time. But I need to be super careful because if you look down below at the new seller count, I can see that this model, i.e. the information I'm basing on the way it works, does work for all this number of sellers. But what I can also see is that quite recently, the number of sellers is increasing, it's going up. And what do we see when we have a change in the number of sellers? Well, supply and demand, it changes. But interesting enough, the amount of supply, i.e. right now, seven sellers, has never been seen before in the history of this product. So everything I'm basing my decisions on, i.e. Amazon sharing price, what's going on, you know, uh, the price that's, that's happening is selling out the buy box price and the sales rank, is all based on the sellers being below four. Right now, it's seven, and it could go a lot higher. And if it starts going a lot higher, all my data modeling, everything I've looked at in the past, might go out the window. So when I'm looking at these kind of products, I'm interested to see what's happened in the past, what's going on, but also as well, I want to understand what's going on in the number of sellers and if what my estimation is, i.e. my analysis of the product in the past, if that still holds up today due to the competition, supply and demand. So when I look at this product, I'm seeing number of sellers is increasing, it's never been that high before, I'm potentially worried that this product, what's gone on in the past, the dynamic of it will change because now the competition is getting more it's increasing. So for you, whenever you're doing your analysis, do look at the graph, do look at that analysis, do understand what is happening, do make a good estimation, but 
just be super mindful that that information, that, that understanding, that learning of the past is based on the competition during that time. And if you are now going into uncharted water, i.e. more competition than you've ever seen before, things will change. So you might want to do a caution on that one. But that is a little bit about how I review a deal and actually some things I'm looking at as well. Okay guys, so that is the expert training done. Now look, the one thing which I'm gonna say is there is still more to learn about Keeper. I could probably spend a lifetime just recording videos and it probably wouldn't be that helpful. But hopefully in that video, you've seen some things or should we say, seen the importance of checking everything, questioning everything. And I said this back in my first video, every single deal you're reviewing, you should be looking at that graph and asking why is it doing what it's doing? And what you're trying to do is you're trying to spot for things that you don't understand. You know, if the number of sellers increases and the price decreases, okay, we get that, more competition. But if something else happens that you're saying, hmm, that seems a bit suspicious, you need to start questioning why, like what's going on, because it's these points that either could be a great opportunity to invest big and make a massive profit or stay away from. So hopefully today in this Keeper Expert Training, you have seen some of that information, you've seen some deals or products that, should we say, we should be really taking our time and really questioning. So again, I come back, break those charts down, ask why. Why is the product doing this? But what I will say is, if you like this content, give me a thumbs up, I love a good thumbs up. And hey, maybe you've got some comments, maybe there's some questions, or hey, maybe you've just found it useful. If you liked this content, drop me a message down below. I love comments, thank you for that. But what I will say is from me, Thomas Parkinson at Fast Track FBA, thank you very much.